So we talked about the tensile strength of rocks for one slide last time, right? The reason is they're not very strong in tension, of course. However, you can get, you know, tensile stresses around the wellbore. How, given what you know about delta P and how it changes sigma theta theta and sigma RR, what would be one way which you can induce tension in the wellbore? Increasing delta P, right? And the pore pressure is the pore pressure. So the way you increase delta P is through increasing the mud weight. And so this figure shows that. Remember, sigma theta theta moves down, gets smaller, of course. It's still going to oscillate, right? So if I move it down, eventually I'm going to put it into tension, right? So where the minimum where the minimum hoop stress is could go into tension in these regions, okay? Now you see sigma RR has increased there. It's moved off of zero. So we've put this into tension. And so in that case, you'd get the tensile-induced fractures. And where do they occur? In terms of their relationship to SH min and SH max. Well, the breakouts occur at the maximum value of SH, which is SH min. Right? This is the minimum, and it's 90, and it's 90 degrees away. SH max. So, so the, your tensile-induced fractures will occur at SH max. And and this is consistent with, you know, when we when we what you may know just from high-level observations about. You know, when we typically when we do hydraulic fracturing in a horizontal well, which direction do we drill the well? You know? Yeah, it's it's a little different than a horizontal well, but yeah, I mean we, we drill it we drill it in the direction of SH max, right? Per perpendicular to SH min. S because SH min is the you know so in the direction of SH max is where the, the hydraulic fracture is going to grow, right? right. I'm sorry. We, we drill in the direction of SH min. Right. In the direction of SH min, and the fractures are going to grow 90 degrees to that. Right. We want them to grow 90 degrees to that in the direction of SH max, perpendicular to SH min. Okay. So in this case, we're, you know, we're not... These are unwanted. These aren't these aren't stimulated hydraulic fractures. These are unwanted. You know, we're talking about drilling a wellbore here. These tensile-induced fractures, which are induced by mud weight, can lead to lost circulation. Right. So these are these are this is not a, deni a desirable s scenario. And we'll talk about hydraulic fracturing in isolation. You know from a stimulation standpoint later in the semester. These, these are tensile-induced fractures associated with drilling, and we do not want them there. And so that, that sort of leads us to you know, the, the idea of a mud window, right? And you've probably heard this before in drilling class. And you know, if any of you know Dr. Gray, also has a, a, a graduate uh, sort of joint, you know, his graduate students working within this joint industry project. And the name of the project is actually called Wider Windows, right? And the, the, so the idea is to widen the mud window, right? Because it's a it's typically a very small window. We, you know, we can increase we can increase the mud weight to add some stability to the wellbore, but only up to a point because then we begin to induce tensile fractures, right? And of course, if it's too low, then we have breakouts and leading to possibly an unstable wellbore. If it's too high, you have tensile-induced fractures. And there, there are production things associated with these, too. Um, well, if the mud weight's too low, or if you're, say, drilling in, uh, underbalanced, then you're taking on formation fluids while you're drilling, and you have to be able to handle that. It's not always a bad thing if you can handle it. Um, 
but if the mud weight's too high, in addition to tensile induced fractures, you can uh, cause some formation damage because you're you're basically uh, forcing drilling fluid into the formation. 